Welcome to Villa sur Olon, a picture perfect place for an IFSE competition. It's coming up to 8 pm Central European time, and as you can see, the clouds have lifted above the top of the mountain. You can see the valley and the mountains beyond. Humidity around about 74%, temperature 16 degrees, and we are almost ready to get underway. My name is Mac Room, and very soon I shall be joined by Victor Baudrin from Team Canada, and then, well, I'll leave my second guess as a bit of a surprise for later on. The men will be climbing first this evening on this wall that you can see in front of you. It's intimidating, overhanging, and it's got that checkerboard pattern throughout. Let's have a look at how the finalists made their way here. Jakob Schubert, high on the head wall, trying to find that clip, making the match, reaching through and making the clip during the semi-finals. Awesome from Jakob. Good to see him back on the biggest of stage and performing well. Jakob will climb once more. And then Adam Ondra, first lead comp of the year. And he's back with a bang, looking strong and coming so, so close to topping the route. One hand on the jug before taking the swing back down to earth. The finals place for Mr. Adam Ondra. Colin Duffy, oh, how close has that man come in recent competitions? Ninth in Boulder, seventh in Boulder, eighth in Boulder, so, so close, but he's back where he belongs in a final, topping out the roots with that jump. And Colin Duffy will be aiming for gold and certainly a podium place here this evening. And then Serato Anraku, well, he's already won the overall title for 2023 in bouldering. Turned his attention to lead and, uh, as you can see, hyping the crowd up, very relaxed up on the wall. He might have been a bit tired in Innsbruck. He's not tired anymore and he's a real threat to his competitors. Let's move on to the women. Well, Brooke Rabatou, this was part of rope gate that happened earlier on. A couple of athletes catching the rope. Those appeals weren't upheld. The order stood. And this was after that sequence. That's Suki Tani climbing her way into a final. Good to see. Looking strong and confident out there on the wall. 26th in Innsbruck. Much better here in Vila. And the second time we've seen her this year. So still trying to work out what kind of form she's in. And then Xian So, well, again, another one of those climbers who's been practicing on a on the boulder wall all season. She's back on her lead wall, and boy, does she look good. Just missing that jump down to the right foot. Falling, waving, and another finals place for her. And again, one for the podium, perhaps. And there's Brooke at the top. Tricky on the head wall. Forced her way through. Had to match this hold with both hands and then look for the jump. Great work from Brooke. And then the queen, Yanya Gambre, or well, she's back in action. Looks super, super smooth. The only woman to top the route out. I asked her if she was concerned about the rope thing. She just shrugged at me and said, well, look, it's not my fault. And it certainly wasn't. Judges allowing that to continue. And you're making the clock clip at the top and you wouldn't be betting against her for a gold medal this evening. Certainly the favourite on paper after her heroic double gold in Innsbruck. Well, just joining me is uh, Victor Baudrin, who is uh, run from a session. So he's just getting himself ready uh, next to me. Good to have him back in the commentary box. And I think, in fact, I could put him on air. Victor, number Hello. one, thank you for joining of me. Of course, I'm psyched. How, how was the session? The session was good. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, it was good. It was good to find some flow again after the upsetting qualifiers for me. But yeah. uh, that's how it goes. You know, you have to play the game. And the field is packed, like many people have said this year. So you can't make any mistakes. Absolutely. It's super, super tricky. And we were watching you during the qualifying. And yeah, we know that you've got the potential to make semi finals. Thank you. Finals, thank so you. Can't wait to see you out there again. All right. You talked about the stack field. A couple drawing my attention. Number one is Colin Duffy. Yeah. Because he's come so close, hasn't he? Totally. Never made it. Yeah. Bit of a confidence boost for him this evening. He, he climbs great. When it's his style, he can just, like, motor through moves and surprise the entire uh, crowd. Um, and then we also have a few other young young guns in here. The Japanese team, for sure. 
Yeah, first finals for him, so it's going to be exciting. There he is on yeah. stage. I mean, the nerve. I mean, you think he would feel nerves at this point, but I've, I've given up thinking the Japanese team have any nerves. I don't know. Like, they handle it so well. Their, their, stack, their field in uh, Japan is stacked, so they have to deal with that level all the time. They're used to it, I think. And he's just 17 as well. But there is a man who is used to the pressure, Alex Magos. And he seems to enjoy Vilas. He is, yeah. And he's, he's looking super fit this year. He's putting in a lot of work. And Toby Roberts there on screen. I mean, look, you're similar age to Toby yeah. coming through. How much of an inspiration is that man to you? Pretty amazing. They call him the Terminator. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just because he can motor through moves. And you think he's off one second? No, he keeps going. <laughs> yeah, he puts everything into it. And Jakob Schubert, well... I am a little bit biased towards that man because I love yeah. to watch him climb. I'm excited. There's a great variety of age um, in this finals. Yeah, age and styles. And yeah. someone, again, in Jakob's kind of category is really? Adam Andre, And he looked good during the qualifying especially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Adam is back. And the crowd, as you can see, appreciating him being here. And then Colin Duffy, well, we chatted about him earlier, finally making a finals back where he belongs. And he looks so confident during yeah. the semi-finals. Super, super chill. Got it all done. And then finally, well, he's been the talk of the season. Serato. Oh, sorry. It's, yeah, is that Serato there? Yeah, Serato. yeah, Serato there. Absolutely incredible. I mean, I did not expect him to win the overall title yeah, for Bolton. Yeah, wow. And then he's showing up in lead and, and doing the same thing. It's amazing. I, I think you can bring that confidence in throughout the different, uh, throughout the seasons. I think that helps a lot. Yeah, apparently his coaches were saying they kind of put him into the boulder comps as a sort of a, let's just see how he does. Yeah. Then he accidentally won the thing. That's so crazy. <laughs> but it's lead where he excels. So, you know, uh, I'm really excited for you, Faye, because I don't know, was it 2019 or 2018? Yeah, well, when he when last he, won. Or yeah, or like made podium. Yeah, I'm having a look back. It's certainly been a long time. It has, and I'm excited to see what he can do today. It was in Vilas, 2019, yeah, okay. he was second. Wow, that's super cool. It's funny how certain athletes like this, uh, this wall, so yeah. it's, it's very interesting. Well, this is the observation that happened before we started talking. The athletes gathering together as they do to try to work out the sequences, and a couple of uh, usual suspects there, Magos, Andra, and Jakob grouped together. Yeah. The oldies. The, old, the oldies. I'm glad I didn't say that. They killed me. <laughs> no, you, I can make fun of them. Yeah, you absolutely can. Veterans, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, more PC. that's better. It's polite. But talking about a veteran, there is Jane Kim. Yeah. How cool is it to have that her back awesome. here? Yeah. It's funny. This, uh, this venue is usually more, I would say, comp style. The moves are, are dynamic, and you see a lot of surprises. Um, yet you have some of the more experienced climbers, the veterans, we could say, um, that, that benefit really from this style. I don't know. Maybe it's the fiberglass? I don't know. Yeah, it's funny. It's, I think maybe some stadiums suit some athletes. Yeah. And also, it must be a confidence thing as well. You know, yeah. if you know you've done well here in the yeah. past when you come in, yeah. have you got a favorite stadium you like to climb in? I think Villars, honestly. Yeah. Okay. The style is like, very punchy and bouldery and I love fiberglass holds and volumes and so you you climb like this 3D environment like you can see the finals roots here at the men's at the bottom the the holds are so high profile they're sticking out of the wall so you really have to play around with them and and use your body well but it's also endurancy and bouldery it ha it offers all of it yeah look on the men's you have the a triple stacked um uh, kind of sky ball pancake situation going with a yellow hold um, in the middle. That that type of volume stack only is seen in Velars. I think we call it the fried egg. That's what I'm going to call I, it anyway. I love that. That's better than <laughs> that, my triple stack. Uh. You know me. I just make stuff up as I go along. Yeah. Well, we'll see it in a minute. Ufo Pan comes out first of all. He was 13th in Innsbruck. Did an okay boulder season, up and down, a bit inconsistent, but 14th place finishes along the way from Team China. And so good to see Team China back. They will be competing heavily in the uh, speed tomorrow, so really cool that they get a chance to compete. So here we go. Now, the start of this route, I talked to the route setters, and right. apparently physical okay. but not too bad up to that fried egg hold oh, and that's cool. where the crux really oh, starts. Oh okay wow. 
So Yufa is underway. Red and black holds. Dual techs shining throughout. From my experience, uh, the, the bottom of the roots are often not so hard, but they're risky and, and you have to find a good flow. Otherwise, you can get easily pumped. Yeah, it's kind of pump management, isn't it? Because it's sure. steep straight off the yeah. deck. And clipping can be awkward, and you can lose a lot of energy easily. But if you climb well, you can you can get some some good flow and and save a lot for the top. Absolutely. Well, Ufo will have to clean climb clean and quickly through this bottom half of the route to make sure he's got the energy for the top half. So makes the clips. I like the way he's clipping. It's power clipping. I call it. He's quick and and decisive clipping. Bum bum. Is that something you practice, like clipping? Because by now, I think you'd be an expert at it. Honestly, sometimes you can fumble a clip and it just throws your flow off 100%. So that's a hard shoulder move. Yeah, and blocked as well. You've got to be accurate there. But he just committed. You see power clip right there. That was quick and swift. Yeah, it's no messing, isn't it? He just mm -hmm. gets it and moves yeah. on. And you can see on the left of your screen that graphic. That's going to indicate where the winners are so you can keep track of them. It's very simple in lead. Whoever climbs highest wins. If you don't reach the top, then each hold is scored via a point system along the way. So Yufai Pan is on hold 17, therefore he's got 17 points on the board. If you use a hold, going to the next one, you get a plus if you fall off before you get there. I'll explain that more when it happens. All right, so Yufai is holding on to the sloper high up on the wall. Looks quite a good resting position, though. Yeah, especially in these conditions, uh, those flat holds are super sticky. This underclean move does look powerful, though. Nice. Yeah, he's into the volcano. That's the fried egg hold, the stacked volumes that we were talking about. And there's a big old jump over to there. It is a jug on the yellow holds, but you've got to get to it. No feet. That crimp coming up does not look super good either. No, he locks it off with a left. And here's the jump. Here we it's go. It's blind as well. Wow. Sinks into it. And this is probably the best opportunity for them to rest on the route. And you can see he's got a bicycle in with the right and left foot and then makes the clip. Oh. That looks kind of like an awkward rest, but he's making it work. Yeah, because that right heel isn't really sinking into yeah. the dish. No, Colin Duffy is very good at these high heel rests. He just, he loves them. He, sometimes he puts a toe hook on instead of a heel. I think Yufai just cleaned his left shoe then, or chalked it up or something, I'm not quite sure. And he's stretching his uh, calf, or his hamstring as well. Oh wow, you were right, the, the root setters did not mess around here coming up. Those are some hard looking moves. Yeah, it's definitely a root of two halves this, and now it really kicks up into the crimps. Now he can get the heel in better, but that's what he's holding on to. Yufei has not made any mistakes so far. It's perfect from him. Yeah. Might be a knee bar here, but I think it's blocked by that black hold. I think he needs to get his foot up. Oh, wow. Into the block crimp, locks it off again. Yeah, just crimps really for the next couple of meters or so. This is a strong first climb from Yifei Pan, really qualifying is. in last place for the finals. Maybe a toe hook or a heel hook right here. Nice, he's finding it. He's got the toe in, look at that right elbow coming up though. He needs to flick the oh. hand. I think he was coming into a pinch then. Yeah, it seems like he maybe got fumbled with the rope. Another thing that's crucial is rope management. If you flip into your rope or you have the rope on the wrong side of your hand when you're going to do a big move, it can really get in your way. Yeah, during the, uh, I think it was the qualifying, well, it's in the semi-finals, I saw a lot of athletes having to flick their hand around totally. the rope. And then, yeah. of course, we had the rope incident for the women, yep. where they were hooking it by accident. Yep. So, yeah, you're right. It's uh, very important. All right, well, one climber dump. That is our arena here in Villas. The crowd all down the front, the coaches and athletes closest. Let's have another look at you, Fai. This was down at the beginning. Shouldery moves up into the jug. And then these crimps, that's so nasty. It's kind of sloping as well. Yeah. Overall, I think he climbed great. I think so too, yeah. Real. That was the thing, oh, yeah, you're right. Kind yeah. of hit the drawer on the way through. All right, so Yufei Pan is done. 
we move on. Shion Omata is out next. His first World Cup. Oh, no, sorry, not first World Cup. He was in Innsbruck 12th. His first finals? First finals, yeah. So he's guaranteed a PB. 17. How old are you, Victor? Uh, I'm 20. Born in 2003, so I'm, I'm older for my category. Last year was my first, uh, my last um, year in youth. Okay. All right, Shionamata is up and underway. Whatever he does, it will be a PB for him. Of course, he'll be looking to get on the podium, show those Japanese selectors that he's one to consider. Yeah. Big jump up, dragging on that hold with the fingers. I'm such a fan of these uh, EP holds. I love their shape. Yeah, the EP guys are actually in the stadium and they're the most enthusiastic oh. bunch of wall creators I've ever <laughs> met in my life. <laughs> so psyched on, uh, on the walls they create. I've actually heard that this wall um, is going to be very similar. The Villars wall is going to be very similar to the wall in Bern. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's an EP. Yeah, it is an EP wall in Bern, yeah. I think. Or maybe I'm confusing it with the, the Beringen wall. Yeah, my game will, um, yeah, like, yeah. The, the one in Briançon as well is brand new, the one yeah. coming up in a couple of weeks. That'll be interesting. That'll be super interesting. Briançon is known as the kind of the sketchy World Cup because they set some really um, technical slabs at the bottom and then it kicks back into this 55 degree roof. Oh. And you don't have time to breathe. You just get sucked into this boulder problem off the ground. Yeah, well, and it, this time around, I think it'll be a little different. Yeah, brand new wall that's coming in two weeks. But right now, Shion Omata is resting high up on the wall with a heel. And so far, as we know, it's just about managing the power down low. Those uh, square checkered-like shapes that mark the wall kind of give you an indication of where the athletes are. And he's about halfway through at the moment. I think this is the first crux of the, the route. It's really awkward, kind of twisting yeah, that toe in. Totally. Nice. nice. He's finding a little toe hook jam. Yeah, that left foot looks like it's watched yeah. into the crack. <laughs> watched. That's a word for you. <laughs> All right. Fried egg hole coming up. Remember, it's blind. You've got to jump sideways. You have got that right foot to spring off. And he oh, misses. No. Fractionally too low on that. You thought Pan made it look, all look he so did, easy. But he really went fur further. Like, he really made the effort to go far. And I'm sure it's also blind. Like, you're not exactly sure where that hole, that jug is. Well, he's pretty happy. His first finals. And uh, you can see the crowd getting behind him there. A lot of the crowd gathering on the left of the arena, although they're starting to filter through now towards the right as well. As you can see, as they fill around, I think that left side is closer to the wall. Well, let's have another look at this again. Easy through the first. Watch his right hand. It was slightly under it. Disappointment, but a good effort. Currently second, sitting in second position. And the, uh, the weather has been in and out, let's just say that. Yesterday during the qualifications, it's some of the worst conditions I've ever watched athletes climb in. It, what was it like out there? It was honestly, I, I thought it was dry, but um, the, the athletes and the roots were getting a lot of chalk because the humidity, just you're sweating more and, and you feel like you need to chalk up some more than you actually uh, uh, are used to. And so all the fiberglass got this awkward layer of humid cake chalk and so it made them feel very slippery and that's why some some athletes were like oh it's wet but i think it was just the the thick layer of chalk that was stuck on there yeah chalk is sticky until it builds up because like we were in the clouds yeah we it was totally, you couldn't yeah. see the wall at yeah. times well alex magos likes this wall second in 2021 and he's very recently made a podium uh, in innsbruck where he was also second got that silver and Alex looks in good form at the moment. He is right now. Right, he 
comes out to the slope but gets the heel locked in. Cruises that shoulder move. Is he jamming? <laughs> I think he might be jamming in there. I can't see his right hand. I hope it is a jam as well. Yes, Vegas. That's awesome. Or is it a crimp? It might be a crimp. I might be over over hyping the jam, but I do like to see a jam. I can't tell. I think that was a jam. I think it was too. Yeah. He's keeping it interesting. He is. Out, outdoor styling. That's what I like to see when when athletes and climbers are just playing on the wall, you know, getting creative. Yeah, really. And then he's jamming again. He's making good use of that feature. I mean, Alex climbs a lot outdoors, and features like that we see outdoors. Yeah. Well, there you go. You crackheads out there, <laughs> you will uh, enjoy that moment. All right, Alex with the high heel. And he now goes directly left hand into the other thing. That seemed really efficient. Yeah, moving very smoothly. Just look at the way he uses his feet. Brilliant from Alex. He's got to focus here. Sets himself. Oh, so easy. Almost static into that. All right, so Alex underway. That's cool. He's doing a little bike on the dual techs, but he seems very com uh, comfortable. He does. Ufo Pan had uh, his right foot on top of that white volume, pressing on the black jib in there. Alex. For the rest? Yeah. I, I think Ufe did a double heel. Yes, no, you're right. And for the rest, yeah. For the rest. But he had a bicycle for a moment. Okay, but yeah, Alex not right. using the heels. You're right. And he looks stretched out. Is that restful position, do you think, for him? I think so. Oh, campus is up. All right, well, Alex is into the business end of this route now. Yifo Pan got 34, he's on 28. Thing is, you do all those big shouldery moves and suddenly you've got to ask your fingers to crimp. It's yeah, crimp and then clip from there, you know. He goes straight for the second one, into the right, which means he doesn't need to do that awkward, uh, he doesn't do oh, the awkward wow, flip. Yeah. That's right. Switch to heel. And this will be Alex in the lead. Oh, oh big foot pop though. And look how blocked that hold is. He's got a couple of centimeters yeah. to aim for. All right, Alex on the head wall, but watch those elbows. They're starting to go up. And although the angle kicks back, it's still really quite overhanging up there. He doesn't seem like he knows what to do here. Yeah. And I can't tell you. No, it's back and forth. It's complicated. I mean, there is a jump to the red volume coming up. Okay, it's the cross under. That's right. And I'll make the clip. He's kind of standing on the rope, a bit awkward. Maybe not a huge jump here, but maybe a spring up. We'll see. Yeah, he's got to... Hits the slope and brings the thumb in underneath. That left foot does not look good. No, it does not. Alex struggling here. And he falls. Wow. Alex did some insane foot beater at the top of the semi-final routes. Uh, he found his toe. Wow. It was crazy, like standing on the smallest, smallest edge. All right, Alex is in the lead as things stand. We've had three athletes, quite a few. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> He's talking to us, Victor. That's what's going on. I'm still trying to process what the route is asking. Like, he seemed pretty stuck right there. The left foot is not great. It's just vertical. Um, maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. We're going to have to see. Yeah, we will. We've got a few more to come. Alex is happy, though. He gave that everything, and he will tell I've forgotten about the Vila King seat or Queen seat on the left of the stage. It's a gold and red. Hopefully, oh, we'll get yeah. a shot of that. Well, he got the jump easy, made that jam we just saw down low, and that was the final move for Alex. And he returns to the deck to sit in the hot seat. And Toby Roberts is out. Did Alex get the plus there? Uh, we'll wait for the scores to be okay. updated. Yeah, I'll just have a little check. Because I think getting that red hold is going to be a crux of the head wall. The first uh, EP red volume that Alex got with his right hand. But we'll see.
Yeah, we will see. Right, Toby Roberts, one of a real hopeful for to claim an Olympic qualifying place in Bern. The Terminator. Alex has currently got 40, so not okay. the plus yet. Okay. All right, here goes the Terminator. <laughs> Now, if Toby wins, he'll be the first British climber to ever win in two disciplines. Incredible. So world records could be broken here, or records could be broken. Yeah, do go and watch that competition in uh, Brixton when he won the gold for Boulder. It was incredible. That was an amazing comp, yeah. Hardest I've ever seen an athlete try on the wall, I think. That's what um, some of my friends have told me, that he... Uh is one of the climbers who can try the hardest and for a really long time. Yeah, and he's staticking this move, then hits the cut loose and just campuses up wow. the casual one armor, as you do. All right, so Toby looking clean at the moment. Hips close to the wall. And night is starting to descend here. It's been a uh, light till very late, but the clouds are overhead, so it will get dark quick. He's in the spotlight. I'd be fascinated to see if he does a jam here as well. Toby's one of the another outdoor climber. Multiple nine A's. And he doesn't just <laughs> Alex was just showboating that jam, I think. He was trying to show off his gritstone roots. Totally. <laughs> See, it's cool. It's some playful climbing. I think it's awesome. All right, Toby shakes out, looks down at the clock. Clock is on the bottom right of your screen. Four minutes 20. That's how long he's got to do this route. Oh, jam. Yeah, and up into the undercling crimp thing. Mike's picking up every rattle of the quick draws there. Those quick draws are super nice. They, I think they're the new pencil spirits. Ooh. Yeah, I noticed them in qualifiers. They clip so smooth. <laughs> Vila's has some budget to spend, clearly. Totally. Yeah, nice wide carabiner and wide gates for the athletes. All right, Toby's resting. And we start with the men's tonight. Women's comes later on, and then the speed finals is tomorrow on Sunday. And Toby gets going again. Left foot scrubbing on that volume. And this is the jump that makes me nervous. Very easy to mess it up. Oh, he's trying to go statically. Wow. Sets himself for this jump, gets it easily. That's a wild position to be in, isn't it? Yeah. He barely got deep enough in the right hand jug. Just for Toby. He immediately gets the right foot up. <laughs> I don't think he was hyping the crowd. I think he was shaking out, but it looked like he was hyping them, and he kind of thanked them after that. All right, Toby will milk this rest. He knows what's coming. He's got two minutes, 24 seconds on the clock. He launches up with the heels still in. Finds the left shoulder now. He's got to press into that, and we know how good he is at those kind of moves. Wow, a little shake right there. That was super smooth. He's so good at those micro shakes. Totally. Just cracks him in. He's also really strong at the three finger drag. So if you notice, like most of the time, if he can, he will just drag a hold. And a drag for people who don't know what it is, that's when you're not closing your fingers, you're leaving them yep. open. And he's, he's not pinching that. You'll have to do the flip. Oh, it's dangerous that, but he gets it in. Big bump up to the next crimp. Nice. The control there, I thought yeah. he was going full on for it, but he stopped himself just well, I think before. That was just a little way to shake off a little bit. 
All right, far right foot, but this is where things get complicated. And we saw Alex pause here. And Toby is struggling. Wow. <laughs> Pads only on that. Directly reads the under. Oh, I'm, li I'm literally gritting my teeth with him. Right, he gets the cross through. No way. Struggling a bit with that clip. It's awkward because it's right by your right foot. Is he going to shake off right there? I think he's trying to. It might wow. have cost himself a bit of energy, though. See, this move is really hard. He's trying to match two fingers only with the left hand. No way. How does he find these positions? This is so impressive. I feel like I'm fanboying out here. Big jump, oh. misses the reach up, and that's 39 at the moment. That was an awesome fight. 20 seconds left on the clock. He kept looking down. He just, yeah. Trying to time his rests. All right, well, good work from Toby. We'll wait for the confirmation, but as things stand, he's in second place. And Terminator has given it all. I love that nickname. I genuinely didn't know he had it. <laughs> all right, well, Toby will untie that knot. It locks up a bit under force. And then we'll get to see him. So, Victor, I had your uh, head coach in the commentary box yeah. earlier on, Malik. He yeah. was good. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool to hear the sort of like the coaching side totally. to this. Yeah. You have Alana in here a lot as well. And so I do, yeah. I made a joke on the group chat saying, uh, watch out, Malik. Uh, watch out, Alana. Yeah, Malik is going to be replacing you. <laughs> yeah, I think he was a bit nervous, but he did really, really well. And that was Toby's jump, got the heel in. Yeah, do go back and listen to it. Yeah, it was Malik on the semi-finals, and he gave some good insights into athletes' mentality. He said you were particularly poor, but, you know, that's just that's for you and him to Classic. work out. I'll have a chat with him after. Yeah, do, do, do. No, I joke, of course. <laughs> All right, Alex Magos, top spot, 40. Toby Roberts, 39+. Yufo Pan and Shion Omata, that's our top four. But four incredibly strong athletes to come. Jakob Schubert, Adam Andra, Colin Duffy, and Serato and Raku to finish off the men's side of the competition. Well, there is our drone as it pans around the stadium. Athletes are on the left under the tents. Crowd at the front and our commentary boxes in those boxes on the left. So we get a great view of the stage as the sun sets behind the mountain as well. So a beautiful place to go climbing here this evening. And there is, that's the chair I was talking about. <laughs> it's the hot seat. Alex is in it. He suits it, I think. He does. I know there are a few pictures of him before from previous years in the same seat. Uh, I remember Sean Bailey sitting in that seat yeah. and looking kind of awkward and confident all at the same time. Yeah. It was like surprised to be there, but suited it. You know? Yeah. Well, Alex is probably drinking his favorite cup of tea there. <laughs> He's, uh, I went filming with him in the UK once and he texted me just saying, can you bring 60, 60 packets of tea with you? Because no <laughs> I can't get them. <laughs> he loves his tea. Anyway, a little weird fact for you there. That's our crowd. So they're enjoying the moment. Yeah, for such a small little village, it seems like everyone is here yeah. this evening. And people are going to keep coming in. Yeah, they are. You can hear this event from all over town. You can see the trees framed in the background. So what's the gym situation like around it? Did you go down into the valley? Yeah, I went down to Villeneuve. Um, there's a gym called Grimpy.ch. Uh, a few other athletes were there as well training. Um, uh, it's, it's good. It's super cool. Yeah, Switzerland has some good gyms. Yeah, and then, of course, from here, it's moving to Chamonix. When does Team yeah. Canada go over there? So Team Canada this year is a bit separated. We're all doing our own thing. My brother and I are traveling together. And uh, we're heading there tomorrow. Okay. But we'll squeeze in a session in Switzerland before we head over there. Yeah, get acclimatized yeah. to Chamonix. That competition taking place next weekend. And That's then a we fun venue as well. Another new wall. I don't know if you've heard. No, I hadn't. It's uh -huh. a new one. Yeah. Oof, okay. Yeah. 
So a little spicy. Yeah, because they sold the wall to Indonesian yep. Federation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The one that we saw in Jakarta last year. Yes. All right, Jakob Schubert is out. He's 32. He's an utter legend, and he can fully get on a podium here. I really am excited to see what he can do on this thing. It is his kind of route, especially is, the bottom. Yeah, totally. All right, Jakob approaches the wall, just happy to be out there climbing. I spoke to him in Innsbruck, and he admitted that, look, the young kids coming through perhaps have him at bouldering at the moment, mm -hmm. but lead, he still reckons he can fight for it, and totally. as he's proven. I think experience plays a big role in the, in the lead game. Like, the experienced climbers, it's just, there's just a process that you have so dialed, you can execute every single time, nearly. Yeah, um, and just knowing the holds, knowing yep. what setters are thinking. Knowing your warm-up, knowing the timing of, of the competition. Um. All right, well, Jakob climbing well at the moment. Through section one, into the white holds. Setters have very kindly put different colors on the wall so we can work it out. Big shoulder bump. Getting lots of support from Team Austria, especially who have gathered it en masse to cheer him on. Talking that right foot into the crack. Deciding not to use that that toe jam. You really have to twist the toe jam in there. It feels so good though when you when you twist it in correctly, it just sticks. Yeah, it takes all the weight off your arms totally. when you get it right. Alright, so he's got toes, the left toe in and that right just pressing against the wall. Here comes the jump, gets the crimping. No problem for Jakob. Super smooth. It pushes you so far out from the wall because yeah. it's stacked up like that. Yep. And the curve of the rope is yeah. really dramatic. And I think if you jump a little too far out of the wall, you have a hard time getting deep into the right hand jug. You have to kind of go in to the wall. Yeah, so a tricky move, but Jakob executed it perfectly. Two heels in above his head. I think it's certain to rain. Yes, this storm has been just moving around. When I walked down to the stadium an hour and a half ago or so, it was pouring with okay, rain. It then it went away, came okay. back. So it's just circling the mountain. Luckily, it's uh, cold enough outside that you still have some cold conditions. Yeah, the athletes won't be affected by it. And if the wall survived the rain of the other day, it can handle a shower. Totally. <laughs> The crowd is looking like they're handling the shower too. They're psyched. Yeah, they are indeed. Jakob halfway through. Everyone, apart from Shion Omata, getting to this stage. Up with the left hand, crimping with the right. Big shoulder press from Jakob. Getting the higher foot. Little shake, super clean. It's good setting that by the setters to not allow the knee bar there. Yeah, totally. Because that would really allow them to get something back for the top. But it's always fun when like there's one climber who finds the knee bar and everybody else skips it. And you're like, oh. It's oh. usually Paul Schempf as well. Totally. I was thinking about that in his <laughs> semi-final route. Yeah, he almost had a no-hand rest and no one else got anywhere near. All right. right, this is uh, Jakob's cup of tea right here. Yeah, he's on the crimps, isn't he? Crimps, and he can just machine through them and recover. All right, here we go. The grind begins. Yes, let's see it. Nails the first crimp. Drop me. Decides to go under. Taking it slow. Yeah, Toby was like almost screaming at this point, but Jakob looks... A bit calmer. That rope is getting in the way, but no problem for him. Okay, high foot, that's what we wanted to find. Yeah, he's nailing it. He's moving into first position as well. 
Jakob in the lead. He looks fresh. He does. All right, first time we get to see oh. this. Yeah, he did look fresh. I think he had more to give that. I think so too. Maybe the left hand was worse than he thought. Uh, we'll catch it in a replay at the moment. You can see the rain there, not only on our camera lens, but uh, falling into the crowd. Luckily, we're in a, a lovely warm commentary box up here, so we're fine. <laughs> he seems psyched. Well, with three to go, Jakob is on the top spot. So if anyone falls lower than him, he's guaranteed a medal. And that means Alex will vacate the hot chair thing, whatever it's called. <laughs> and then uh, Jakob will take his place. Next up, we have Adam Ondra. We do have Adam Ondra. Yeah, these two read the route together. The veterans. All right, there's the hot seat. Toby on the left. I think it's a bit unfortunate they have the deck chairs because it looks kind of like a bunch of kids sitting around, kind of all tucked up with their knees around their ears. All right, Adam Ondra is out on stage. He's definitely picking and choosing comps this year, like a lot of climbers are doing. The world champs, they're focused. Yep. Got to get the points to qualify, but... I'm sure many athletes are going to be skipping Alan Buyanson yeah. just because then you give yourself three-week window before Bern, the World Championships. Yeah, lots of teams I talked to, when I asked if they were going, they were like, it just depends. Because yeah. if, you know, the athlete fails to get the points needed in these Those rounds, three. they have to go down that. Yeah. But yeah, as you said, I think ideally a lot of them will skip it. Is your plan to skip her, or are you going? So I was initially going to skip Beyonce, but I'm planning on going now. I'm excited. Yeah, it's always a good place. All right, Adam is underway, climbing quickly at the bottom. He's basically got to get to the top of the wall there to overtake Jakob. That style Adam has, like the little flicks he puts in. He has such a particular style. And if you're new to comp climbing and don't know who Adam Ondra is, Google him, because he's got quite a few videos out there. He's got many records, climbed the world's first 9C route, and he's jamming as well. Now, we, uh, you kind of expect that from Adam. Yeah. That is so cool. There's that story of him teaching the Japanese team how to jam after a competition in Maringen a few years ago. I do, didn't know I do remember that. <laughs> Love that story. Maringen always had these funky hand jams. I think two years in a row, even more maybe. It's always one boulder with a, with a hand jam. And the athletes come out of it with like bleeding knuckles because sometimes you don't know what to do. Look at that. That is a silence-esque move, that twisting the knee down. So cool. Yeah, he has weird flexibility, Adam. Not many could do that. I love how he always, like, takes a moment, closes his eyes, and, like, centers back in so that he can refocus. Yeah, he loves being out here on the stage doing this. All right, gets the clip in. Locks the toe, comes into the left crimp. Oh, no right foot. Huge jump from Adam. He skipped the right pancake foot. That was risky to do that. That just shows the, the confidence he's feeling right now, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, he, he won't have missed it. He'll have seen it. Yeah. He's tall, so maybe he just thought it would bunch him up a bit, perhaps. Yeah. Adam has 16 lead World Cup wins to his name. How many does Jakob have? 19. 19. So Jakob wow. just, just ahead. All right, Adam shakes out with the left heel and stretched up on the wall, the rain continuing to fall. Bumps his left hand to the crimp, right hand through into the shoulder, which he makes look easy.
This is a big move. Gets the right locked. Okay, here we go. I love this hand movement. What's he going to do with it? Comes straight to the pinch like Jakob. Yeah, I think that's that experience coming through. Bumps up like Toby did. He has really good pace right now. Yeah, he does. Two minutes, 15. I mean, Toby was kind of pushing the time at this point. Yeah. No trouble with the clerk. He yeah. knows exactly what to do. Oh, <laughs> we had a hesitation there. Oh, it's dual text, that thing as well. I didn't see that before. So only half of the holds really usable. Up into the dish with the left hand. Now, this is near where Jakob fell. Keep an eye oh, on the score. No. Adam does fall. 41. He might get the plus. We'll have to wait and see. But it won't be enough to overtake Jakob. He seemed a bit bunched up in the, in the undercling. Maybe he was just pumped and couldn't flip. Yeah, I think so. He suddenly had to turn on the gear. Once he got that red pinch yeah. thing, he started to motor. It's weird because he was shaking off on, on that. All right, Adam Dunn, and there's only two to go. Let's watch how he did it. Some good separation on the final here. Really good, yeah. I was concerned at the beginning because I thought everyone was just cruising this first half. Look at that yeah. swing. He just went with it. It's amazing. Didn't try to fight it. All right, so Adam is down and done. Still undoing the knot. <laughs> I always think someone should go and help them at this point. There should be like a desert. I mean, we've got, we've got volunteers for everything else. Yeah. And I think <laughs> Vila is thinking about it now. Adam having a smile, but he's got it done. And Adam did get the plus for that. So it's 41 plus for him. Jakob on 43 and then Alex in third with 40. So yeah, great separation so far for the men. <laughs> I can't like I felt very starstruck this weekend I don't know why but like the idea of sort of shaking hands with Adam especially for uh, Shion Amato who hasn't made a final before yeah. must be pretty special alright well Colin Duffy has done well so far he's one step away from a podium here I forget he's only 19 made the Olympics He likes these shouldery moves. And I can't wait to see his heel hooks on the top. He's also a very dynamic climber. And I think that this bottom section will, will suit him well. Yeah, you can see him sort of springing through the first moves. Fumbling that clip a bit, gets it in now. Ooh, big cut loose. All right, well, that's sixth place, way up. No one really struggling down low. I feel like we should have a sort of a computer game style, like a energy meter <laughs> for the athlete's sort of ability so we can see, because sometimes it's hard to understand the effort they're putting yeah. in for this, because this is still like probably an 8C route here. Yeah, they're doing. totally. It's risky. It's not super straightforward. Maybe you haven't seen some holds that they put on for, you know. Yeah, and techie, I mean, all those yeah. toes and talks. All right, Colin unlocks that right toe, changes it around. And I think I'll look to bump a left heel up. Stays strong on the underclings as he reaches up to the black dish. Oh, oh. finds a knee bar, surely not. That's super cool. I, I don't know what his left foot's on. That kind of... I think it's just on the black one. Yeah, and he's down just, low. just scrubbing against it. Seems like a very small box knee bar. Yeah, and I don't, 
Oh, but that was nearly off for Colin. So he made the decision to do it in one movement at the last moment. Is he going to get the high heels like I thought? Uh, he wants to, doesn't yep. he? Yep. There we go. That's his thing. <laughs> Team USA are good at heel hooks generally, I think. Oh, and he's holding his... Oh, he's warming his hands, I think. Yep. Yeah, it's not that warm out there. Let's see. It's currently 13 degrees. Yeah, it's a fine line because every... Most athletes you talk to like cold conditions, yeah. but you can get cold hands. Yeah, and when yeah, they yeah. get cold, they get numb, you can't feel yeah. it. All right, Colin into the crimps. Directly into the shoulder. Yeah, he's in sixth at the moment. Flicks the left hand under the underclink. This route looks super fun. Lots of support from the crowd as he starts to go left. Watch this right hand, how will we do it? He's got it in a Gaston at the moment, so he's going to have to flick the right hand into the pinch. And he's looking at it now. There, gets it. Gets the heel hook in. All right, Colin looking nice. good. That metal you can see on the wall, a lot of athletes were standing on it during semi-finals and falling. Goes again. Oh, does the foot switch not the drop knee like Jakob and Adam did? It's going to be hard to to twist over. I think he's going to go back down and get the left foot on. Nice. Now he's found it. Is he going to... Oh, oh no. no. He just didn't read the sequence right. All right. So there will not be a podium for Colin. You can see immediately knew he read it wrong. Oh, man. Disappointment from Colin, but he will take confidence from this. Making a finals again, he's kind of broken that jinx he had going on. A lot of the athletes got um, kind of confused with that that left uh, the left handhold is actually a foot for the next move. Yeah, good point. All right, well, one to go, and it's Serato. So this was Colin early on reading the route. He was smooth through the bottom, got the heels in nicely. That swing, he did in a lovely fluid motion, got the heel we hoped, and then this is where he just didn't do that cross through. Right. And that cost him dear. The cross through with the left drop knee. Yeah, that seems to be the way. All right, Sarata and Raku has the five second count, gets counted down, haven't seen that before, and he is on stage and could easily be on the podium here. In Innsbruck, he looked a little tired in the lead finals, which he yeah. would do, considering how much he was climbing. So I feel like we haven't quite seen him at his best yet. Strasser taking a moment to remind himself of this route. The rain has passed us by. It's gone for the moment. It will probably return. And off he goes, quick at the bottom. He's also super young. It's impressive. Crazy, isn't it? I, c I think he's still 16, unless he's suddenly turned 17. No, he's still 16. Wow. Does that make it, that makes him our, our youngest competitor in the finals? In the finals, yeah. Yeah, I think he might be done with the youth scene for a bit. Never know, though. Who knows, he might show up to South Korea yeah. for the Youth Worlds you know, a couple of after the season. Yeah, why not? After the burn. I'm not sure if it's during burn or after. I it's, think it's after, It's yeah. after, right? Just a couple of days. Just a couple. Yeah. All right, so he's got the right heel in. Matches. Only Alex and Adam doing the jam there. I really like the style of climbing. Yeah, I've been impressed all season. You just 
kind of came onto my radar in Hachiochi because he was so new. You know, we didn't know that much yeah. about him. And then, boy, has he been good. My favorite part is how he um, intentionally weights his feet. Like, you'll see, like, his foot will go boom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of an adjustment. Comes back into the underclink. Gets the right foot twisted in now. There's a lot of intention in his climbing. Yeah, I want to make a decision. He commits to it. Into the underclings. All right, here we go. The jump. Only one athlete hasn't done it so far. Left toe in. Left hand on the crimp. Wow, he jumped from the toe hook. Crazy unwind. Most of the athletes have taken their left toe hook out before. All right, well, he looks fresh so far. He's got the easy bit done. And I say easy with air quotations. Quarter of the wall to go, and he will take a moment here to shake out. Currently, Jakob Schubert, 43, is our leader. Then Adam Ondra and Alex Magos after that. The veterans are on the board. That will be a heck of a podium. That will. Oh. I wonder how many times this podium has happened. Uh, maybe, yes. You know, maybe it has before. Maybe. I'm maybe, sure someone knows out there. Maybe not in that order, but... Yeah, those three. I the mean. three are, are legends. Yeah. And Serato, the young upstart, <laughs> might have something to say about it. Into the crimps. In the shoulder, nice. Right, he flicks the hand out. This is quite a full-on move, though. At, stretched out. Oh, wow. Right, he's got his left hand on the pin. She needs to, <laughs> just a casual shake. Needs to bump, and he does. Finds the toe hook. Nice. Goes from the toe hook, okay. All right, here we go. This is all important. <laughs> left foot directly, okay. He's going to try to go left hand, maybe. Yeah, he's setting up for it. No, now, yes, oh, he is. Wow. Whoa, oh, wow. No. Whoa, but that was wrong. Right, that foot comes round. Yeah, you could see that intention. He wanted to do yeah. it right from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not going to make an indent into the podium. So Jakob Schubert's just got a gold medal. And I can see Adam Andre congratulate him down in the winner's enclosure bit. Adam still talking about, I don't think Adam ever stops talking about climbing. He's just on it all the time. And he's literally going through moves with Jakob right now. That's incredible. He just loves it, doesn't he? I did a 25 minute interview with Adam Andre the other day, which will come out soon in the IFSC channel. And he just, he's so enthusiastic. Yeah. And then we stopped filming and he was still talking to me about climbing. You know, it's just, it's awesome. So psyched. That is so cool for Jakob. He it climbed really well. It really is. Well, Serato will come over to Jakob and congratulate him. His teammate is straight away there, though. What an awesome finals, honestly. That's a good route, wasn't good it? Good route, yeah. yeah. Good separation, exciting from top to bottom. Some mystery action over the lip and uh, a bunch of different variations. Yeah. Well, look, beta. Victor, uh, you've got to go and interview the winner right now oh, uh, down okay. on the stage. All so right, good luck with that. It. Thank you for joining yeah, me of course. today. Uh, we've got someone else coming in for the women's competition. Yep. I appreciate it so yep. much, man. We'll totally. see you soon. See, see you in Chamonix. All right, well, goodbye to Victor. Congratulations to Jakob Schubert. He's enjoying every second of that on the podium. And what a podium. That is a podium of complete legends there. Jakob Schubert in the middle, Adam Ondra and Alex Magos. I mean, between the two of them, they've got more sport climbing hard ascents. And I'm trying to think of an analogy. You can shake a stick out? I don't know. Shake a chalk bag? 
brush a hole. I don't know. They're amazing. Anyway, that is our podium for the men. The women's competition is coming up in a couple of minutes. The crowd loved every second of that, and so did Victor and I in the commentary box. Great performance. And let's have a confirmation of those scores. Jakob Schubert, 42 plus is his score. Adam Ondra, 41 plus. Alex Megos, 40. That's our top three. Toby Roberts, close, but not quite. Just a plus keeping him from the podium. Colin Duffy made a mistake, but an awesome fifth place from him. Sarato Anraku, Yufai Pan, and Shion Omata in his first final. What a final. What a stacked field that is. And I hope you enjoyed that back at home. It's one of those finals that went so quickly, I couldn't believe we're on the last athlete. But don't worry, we've got eight women coming. And the top of the women's route is pretty special. I'm not going to give it away, because who knows what's going to happen. But it has a very, the most unique move I've ever heard. So very exciting there. All right, well, that's our lead wall there. The women's route on the right-hand side. And we're going to go down now to Victor on the stage for the interview with Jakob. So, uh, okay, now we're going to the interview. There we go. Let's hear from uh, Jakob, shall we? Hey, Jakob, how does it feel being back on top of the podium? Should I grab it? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it feels uh, so amazing. It has been a while, especially on the World Cup. And um, I mean, I talked to Adam, I talked to Alex. So, um, already in Innsbruck, I felt like the field in lead is stronger than ever. Making finals is already a crazy achievement. And uh, um, yeah, going against these youngsters, but also the old guys. Yeah. Um, it was just amazing to come out top um, today. And uh, it feels also great to be on the podium together with two great friends, yeah. Alex and Adam. We were just discussing, was it one of the oldest podiums ever? Because uh, Alex is turning 30 this year. I'm 32, Adam is 30. The old guys dominated this route today. That's that's what I saw today, and I was wondering how many times this podium has ever happened because you three are some of the most uh, most experienced in the field, and um, yeah, it was really cool to see you guys. Are you uh, going to do Chamonix and Briançon? Uh, no, actually, I was uh, deciding between this and Chamonix, and I decided okay. to go here because it's the earliest, and now I'm only focusing on training for okay. Bern. Uh, yeah, Bern is obviously my main goal of this year, so yeah, I spent like three weeks at home now and totally. just tried to get in my best shape for both lead and boulder. So it's this will be the last uh, lead World Cup before Bern, is that correct? Exactly, so yeah, gained yeah. some confidence, that was good. At the same time, obviously I saw there's so many strong guys like yeah. Anraku Sorato and Colin. It was crazy to, what they did in semi-finals. Yeah. I thought that route was harder than this route. Okay. And um, uh, it was really impressive of both of them topping them. Um, so you can really see, I feel like the field is very close together. It really depends yeah. what style is set. Uh, I really love this route. I love. I love routes where there's like some set, some yeah. uh, rests where you can catch totally. yourself again. Yeah, like um, get a brief yeah. and then just go ham. And uh, yeah, I felt so good on the route. I actually felt like I should have topped it and I, I just slipped. Yeah. Uh, so that would have been an even better party, but it was fun. What happened up there? Was it balancy or, or was the foot small? Because you looked really good. You were shaking out on the head wall and all of a sudden you were off. And we kind of saw that with Adam too. He was looking really fresh, grabbed the yellow, uh, the red EP, and then was off. What was yeah. up with the beta? I mean, obviously the route, um, you do quite a few moves yeah. until up there. But then um, the slab is a slab, like we call it. Like it's not that overhanging. So even on like quite positive crimps, you can shake a bit. And yep. uh, 
I could take a quite good rest just before the handwall with the heel hook. I saw. So I felt quite fresh, and I feel like I climbed the handwall basically perfectly without any, totally. any mistakes. Adam hesitated a little on the move yeah, to this. He, right. he told me that's why he, his left hand got quite pumped, and yeah. that's how he couldn't do the flip. Um, I have to say I felt still really good when I when I fell. Uh, I just kind of dry fired up yeah. this hold, so that's why I was actually kind of mad when I fell. Um, I thought, I don't know, probably a lot of others are gonna climb up there, but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, amazing I guess climbing not today. and a great way to finish off your elite season before Thank burn. You. Thank you so Sick. much. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you to Jakob. Now, I'm very pleased to announce Liv Egli in the commentary box with me from Switzerland. How are you doing today? Uh, yeah, great. I'm really looking forward to this final. It looks amazing. It is amazing. And what a beautiful country uh, that you get to climb in up here in Vilas. It, it, where's your hometown compared to, to this place? Um, I'm from Bern, so yeah, it's a beautiful place here and also looking forward to the world champs in Bern in my yeah, hometown. It's crazy, isn't it? It's been coming for such a long time. We've had like 100-day countdowns, 50-day countdowns, and it's in a couple of weeks now, which yeah. is just mad. It's so crazy. Ah. All right, the women are ready. We flick things around, turn our attention to them. And Jessie Pilks will be announced, first of all. She got a medal in uh, in Innsbruck, and her face. Did you see it when she won the the bronze? She almost couldn't believe it. She yeah. had sort of like a shocked look on her face. Yeah, and also today, um, before um, she knew that she made final, it was like, oh, what I made final? <laughs> Smile was back. And there is a lady. Well, not that. That is Jessie Pilts, but about to come on is Jane Kim, who had definitely 100% retired <laughs> until she came back. She said in an interview with me uh, yesterday, I asked her, why did you come back? And she said, well, I've come back to make my daughter proud, which oh, I wow. thought was just the best reason for returning ever. So yeah, Jane Kim. so great to see her. And I think everybody <laughs> loves to see her climb. Just a legend. And she's got that style that I think I mean, you know, you're a climber, that, that you want to almost emulate her because yeah. she's so smooth on the wall. Yeah, really. All right, well, that is uh, Jessie and Jane out on the stage. Next up, Mia Crample, no stranger to finals. Yeah, she's been so solid in the last comps. Yeah, very strong. She's going to have to be considering the route that's coming up. Look at Jane immediately looking up at the wall still. That is experience for you there. Ignore the crowd, look at the wall. Yeah. And there is a young lady, Mattia Pozzi, her first ever finals. So, so good to see her. There was a quote on the, uh, on the IFSC Instagram account about how pleased she was. Best place up to now was 16th. Oh, wow. Natsuki Tani, she hasn't had many comps this year. Mm -mm. It's good to see her back. And then our spotlight picks out Shen So. I like the, uh, the Koreans' jackets. <laughs> <laughs> that is a cool jacket. I like the blue on it. North Face, hook me out, will you? She also has a really nice climbing style. She does, yeah. And it's good to see her back on a lead wall again, because she was, yeah, uh, really. you know, trying really hard for Boulder. And, uh, but definitely sort of more at home on a lead wall. Yeah, but also done a lot of progress in bouldering. Really I, impressive. I think that's helped her lead as well, because she, the Boulder sequences, yeah. suddenly she looks more powerful on mm -hmm. than before. Also lead climbing becomes more bouldery every time. <laughs> exactly, yeah. All right, Brooke Rabatou's out and about, enters the stage. And then finally, the double gold medalist from Innsbruck, Yanni Gambrett, looking in her element in the middle of that arch. If you want to know about rope gate, go and watch the semi-finals. We had some interesting technical incidents with the ropes where the athletes were getting kind of tangled up in it. And those appeals didn't stand, so our finals is as you see it. And another stack field. I mean, look, Yanya probably the favourite on paper, but with Jane Kim there, with Jesse Pilts there, it still could be anyone's game. Yeah, the field is so stacked also for the women. Did you have a chance to look at the women's route? Did you, what did you think of it? Yeah, I have. 
Um, I think some quite some style changes in it, beginning quite straightforward, and then there's this jump, and then some powerful section with, with the green holes, and then again um, some crimps. Um, and I think in the upper part, um, in the slab, there is some bouldery move. <laughs> well, there is a move at the top of the wall that I have never heard of before on a lead wall, yeah. where the athletes are going to have to rotate to face the crowd, maybe shake out up there, and then spin back into the wall. That's the intended beater. A bit like if you saw in, uh, in Innsbruck, the men's boulder yeah. problem on the slab, the green boulder, where they had to rotate. Similar kind of idea. Up there on those volumes you can see. It's so interesting. I think this the move <laughs> this year, like, everybody's trying to do it. Yeah, and I really want someone to get up there. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Because <laughs> whenever a root setter tells me about an exciting move, I kind of have a fear because I'm like, I, I just hope they'll do it, yeah. you know, because really? I want to see it. And there's also a coordination style run and jump somewhere in there as well. So there's a lot in the women's route. Yeah, really. Which is pretty unique, but we'll see because the athletes have a habit of uh, not doing what the root setters want. <laughs> we just don't know. We'll find out in a minute or two. All right, eight athletes to go, try to get a podium place. If you're just joining us, welcome to Villa sur Olon in Switzerland. I'm here with Liv Egli from the uh, Swiss team. I had Victor Baudrin in with me earlier on for the men's final. That's done and dusted, and now it's the women's turn to compete. The evening is rocketing through. It's, al it's already nine o'clock, and I feel like I've only just arrived in the commentary box. It went oh, so yeah, quickly. Really? In the lead wall on the left, that'll be in action tomorrow. The practice, qualifying and the finals will take place there. Currently, you can see the timing pads halfway up the wall. I think they had a junior competition earlier on today. I think that's why they're there. Yeah, was it today? I yeah, oh, well, I, as I left the stadium after the semi-finals, there was like 50 very young kids stretching in the car park. Okay, so yeah. I presume <laughs> they were part of Problem. that one. <laughs> That they had their comp earlier on. There's that big aqueduct style bridge there. The river below that, biking tracks wind their way through the forest from the mountain behind us. And that gives us a good view. The houses surrounding us, but it's time for Jesse Piltz. Between Jesse and Yanya Garnbrook, they've had 91 appearances in World Cups between them. So experienced. Oh, wow. Jesse with 47. Yeah, she's been here for such a long time and still so strong. So, so strong. And Jesse sometimes, I think, needs like a confidence boost, and she certainly got that in Innsbruck with that bronze. Yeah, really. All right, here we go, our first look at the women's route. Starts on blue and white volumes, then moves into a green section, and then black and white holds before finally that blue section that we all want to see. <laughs> Fingers crossed, everyone. All right, Jesse crosses through with the right hand. Should make a double clip here, I think. Looks quite comfortable. Yeah, not the hardest of starts. Setters were expecting most of the women to get to the head wall in a similar way to the men's competition. It wasn't yeah. that cruxy, but it built up. It's still really cool to watch. Some action in between. Absolutely. Well, here is Jesse, left toe high, hooking down, gets the long clip in. Right heel around the corner, there's a jib around there we can't quite catch right now. Wanted to go for the splits style move and changed her mind. Yeah. And now I think this could be where this coordination move is, let's see. Yeah. Still quite far away, both holes. Yeah, I think the athlete's got to commit to a, almost like a boulder style sequence. Yeah, look, Jess yeah, is setting right. up for it. Oh, wow. No problems for her. Might take quite some time here. Looks pretty good. 
Yeah, it is a big hold, isn't it? But the angle of this wall is so steep. Yeah. What's it like climbing? I mean, as a Swiss athlete, is it good to have that crowd support behind you when you're out there on the wall? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I really like the crowd. All right, Jesse up with the left hand, gets a heel in, turns the toes downwards, hits the slope up. Adjusts with the right hand and then eyes up the crimps coming. Quick flick of the hand, micro shaking her way through. And this purple volume we can see is so big, it's such a huge feature on the wall. Yeah, really. So it makes it here quite steep. <laughs> yeah, it really kicks the angle back. All right, Jesse has a thumb in. Snatches down with the right hand. Jessie having to turn the power on here as she crosses the corner of the volume. So it changes a bit her pacing. It's moving a bit faster. Holding yeah, faster. I think that pump may be starting to kick in. She's having yeah. to move quick. All right, well, we're climbing towards those blue volumes up high. That's what you want to see, we want to see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely you do. But this as well is tricky. They're all so blocked. Yeah. So I think you have to go with the right um, to the next hold. Yeah. So let you can turn around. Those crosses on the wall indicate the last clipping point that the athletes can go past on certain holds. It'll be the one beneath her, not that one. She's, oh, that's an awkward clip. Yeah, really. Oh, she does hand change. So probably not. Made that look pretty smooth, actually. Usually matches like that look very awkward. Yeah, but. really. Changes again. Oh, Jesse in a semi-rest hit. In a half frog squat position with the heel pressing on. Foothold is blocked, looks like. It is blocked, yeah, you can and see there. Change. Oh, it makes this move awkward, doesn't it? Oh, it's so bad. She slips down onto the bottom one, which sticks. Yeah, she had it on the blue and then slipped yeah. down. And that's what her right foot's standing on. Bridging her way, it almost looks like she could take both hands off and just stand there, but the feet are terrible. Wow. Jessie looks at the clock, she's got 48 seconds, which isn't going to give her a lot of time to work out this top sequence. Yeah, really. She hasn't shaken so long, so... <laughs> yeah, I think she was a bit surprised to look down and see that clock at 33 seconds now. Yeah. Because there is a good shakeout you could have here, but she can't really use it. 26 seconds. And this is where it gets confusing. You can see the top hold and the final quick draw way out to the left. Campuses. Oh, I thought she might um, make a hook on the right, then stand up. But Jessie is going to get oh, timed wow. out here. And it's quite a long fall, this as well. If I, if I was oh, up there, I'd be a bit yeah. scared. Oh, she takes the fall. Well, she was running out of time all, all the way. Yeah. But a high point, 43. For a first climber out, that's impressive. Yeah, really impressive. Yeah, the first thing I said when I looked at that top sequence was, oh, that looks run out to the root setter. And he kind of looked at me like I was insane. But, you know, I'm a normal climber. I'm not an athlete. <laughs> it looks scary to me at the top. Yeah. So good. They put these crosses on. Because else it would be really, really far. Yeah, you don't want to miss a draw on that. Well, this was down low. That's the coordination jump, which she made look easy. This was the pinch with the right thumb, and then this final sequence, face down, reaching up, trying to palm, couldn't find it, takes the whip. 
And that's the side of the arena. <laughs> it's a drone. I think he's coming into land there. All right, well, Jesse gets a hand with the rope. First athlete done, and Jane Kim up next. And we're talking about appearances. So you know when I said Yanya and Jessica had 91 between them? Jane Kim has had 95 appearances. 95. Crazy, isn't no. it? She's going for the century. And I think it, we can really see it on her climbing, too. So much experiences. Look, you're on TV, kid. Fair play. All right, well, Jessie leaves the stage. She will immediately sit in the, uh, in the leader's chair on the next to the deck chairs. Skips across the water there. Although the rain has gone away, it's still pretty wet on the stage. And here is Jane Kim. <laughs> well, she was looking up at the wall for a long time when they were being introduced. She's straight back to looking at the wall again. And her attention is all on the top part of that route. Yeah, probably she's heard that Jesse has moved um, quite high. Yeah, I mean, when you're in comps, do you know-ish where the athletes are? Do you have a sort of an understanding of it? Or is it impossible to tell? Yeah, I think yes, because she, she also took like six minutes. And that means that um, she probably <laughs> came quite high. Yeah, that was also an early the cheering fall. and everything. You get to know a bit. And also the quick pros, with, which are always a bit <laughs> moving. So I don't know if she looks at it, but... Yeah, some do and some don't. I've yeah. heard both. Some don't like to know and some <laughs> yeah, do. Really. Also, I didn't notice that first hold she stood It's all dual texture, that bubble there. Oh, well. Yeah. So not difficult, but you have got to think about the beginning. Yeah. This first section is not long, but still long enough to be uncomfortable. Yeah, and the quick draw is actually quite far up. Jessie made this look like absolutely no problem, but Jane is taking her time here. Which is actually a bit concerning because if you think that Jesse got timed out and yeah. Jane is a lot slower. Mm. Well, she's got that first draw in now. Swings out to the right hand side. Yeah, she's very slow and steady down low. We'll make the double clip here. I'm curious if it's really that easy as Tessie made it look like at the beginning. Or if she was just yeah, I, she's just. Yeah, I mean, certainly Jessie is on form, so yeah. it could be that way. It used to be the case in finals, whoever was out last tended to do less well, but it just isn't been that way recently. Yeah, really. All right, she locks off that left, gets a high left heel up. But it's about a third of the way up with two minutes gone. Gets the right toe. <laughs> Look how chill she looks. All right, rotates around into the splits position. Changes her feet, but this is the coordination move. And as you said, Jesse made it look easy. Yeah. Might perhaps not be her favorite move, but I think she'll do it anyway. Yeah, and there's no real cheat around it. It's a long way over to the left. Yeah. So big moment for Zhang Kim early on here. And she's also done quite a lot of bouldering comps. So. Yeah, she'll understand the style. And she holds the swing. Bit of a tick-tock back and forth. And it was easy eventually for yeah, her. Really. So I think she won't have time to shake too long here. No, she's reached the halfway point of her time. And she's not halfway up the wall yet. Uh, 
Chen gets the clip in. Every move is, is like you can see the calculations going through her brain. Yeah, really. Has Jesse taken first the, the crimp and then... I honestly can't remember, to be honest. Yeah. got sucked into the comp. <laughs> so far. Oh, it is far oh. for Jane and she falls. Didn't expect to. Kind of got caught in the rope and you were right. Big, big move for her. Yeah, really. And a bit of disappointment from her. But did her and her daughter proud. And she is one to watch out for as we come towards the World Champs. What a shot that is. Look at those. Light caught beautifully wow. behind it. She kind of hits her head and like, ah, oh, come on. But it was a long way. I think her daughter will be proud anyway. <laughs> I, think so. I don't actually know how old her daughter is. I, don't I don't wonder know. if she's watching. I don't think she's very old, so... One to watch on videos, maybe. Well, this was the toe hook she got around the corner. Easy on the coordination jump. Held the swing, went back and forth. But this move was a long way, and she just almost kicked herself off the wall. Yeah. I can't remember how Jessie did it, if she put a heel hook yeah, or... Just she just made it all look so easy, didn't yeah, she? Really? It didn't look like a problem. <laughs> While Jane stands in the spot like that. Oh, nice. Enjoys that moment. Behind her, Mia Crample enters the stage. Mia really enjoying being back on a lead rope. She was sixth in Innsbruck, so want to improve on her finals performance here. Shoes off, ready to go. And yeah, this is the beginning that uh, Jane was very careful on. Yeah. So this for this dual texture. Yeah, no texture at all there. What's your opinion on the uh, dual text hold? Do you like them or hate them? <laughs> <laughs> They're fascinating. <laughs> I don't know if answer. I like them, but um, sometimes. <laughs> Very diplomatic answer there. Yeah, they are fascinating. They are part of the root setter's toolbox. In fact, we saw some plastic no text sheets that were uh, bolted onto the wall in the semi final, which was the first time I've seen that happen. Oh, yeah, I've never seen that. Look at that sunset behind as well. Pink in the clouds. Right, confident from Mia. And look at the time difference as well between her and Jane's time. Just way around. She's got a toe in as well. We'll unlock it to flick up towards the green. Yeah, she really moved very fast until here. Yeah, smooth for Mia Crample. And this move as well will be something that's kind of ingrained into her climbing DNA. Jug to jug move. Just commitment required for this. Sets herself, no hesitation for Mia Crample, nails it first time. All right, now she'll take a moment to rest here before going Not upwards. Really. She's just going, not even shaking. No, no pump at the moment. I mean, this is expected, like the setters wanted them to get into the head wall here. But they're quite nasty slopers. This is the move. Oh, she hits it though. Easily cracks in the heel. All right, she's into the crimps. Techie climbing now as she gets the pinches in. Loads of heel hooking. Yeah, right foot against the black volume, left foot flagged out. <laughs> what shot, beautiful. Coming through the trees there. I think Jessie did it the other way around. Took, oh, uh, she changes now. This look, looked quite hard for Jessie. All right, Mia bumps up. Yeah, Jessie was fighting at this point, wasn't yeah. she? 
She still looks very comfortable. Up with the left, gets the right heel match to her hand. She reaches up onto the headwalk. I think she's just sorting that clip out. I'm not sure if it was in properly. It is now. Oh, having to pull hard on that right hand. Wow, so flexible. Yeah, she has that in her tool bag. She can just do those kind of moves. So will she do the spin? Yeah, she's nearing that point. She's got a few crimps to get through first. Makes the clip. And this foot, that was what Jessie was trying to stand on, that top blue holder. Now we can see it. You understand why she slipped down on it. It's yeah, bad. Really. She matches as well. She's trying to have a look, but if she gets the right foot there, I'm not sure how she's going to do this move. Yeah. She's going to try to match it, I think. This might be hard with the block. Yeah, it's blocked and blind. And she's try You can see yeah. her almost literally feeling it, trying to figure out where it is. It's got a minute 47 seconds, so lots of time. But you can see for the first time a bit of hesitation in Mia's climbing here. Doesn't know what to do about that foot. That right foot is in the wrong place. She wants the left there. Now, oh, nearly committed to it. Drops back down. And there's the spin. spin. So nice. Faces the crowd. We get to see it. Come on. Really, really cool. Well, we wanted to see it and we got to see it. Wow. That moment facing out and suddenly seeing the crowd must have been amazing. Yeah, wow. Well, it almost looked easier than the hand change and All right, she's got the left crimp locked in. She'll be able to shake out on this next. Oh, Here's no. a big foot pop. Oh, that was looking to be a really good run. Still had enough time and also energy, I think. Yeah, and she figured out the tricky spin. Ah, oh, it's disappointing oh, wow. for Mia, but it might be enough. We don't know. 40 at the moment is her score. Yeah, still a very good result. Yeah, but she had more to give. You could yeah, see it. Yeah. All right, so this was down low. Didn't even think about that move, just straight into it. And then this was the rotation. So cool to see. Facing out, delicate, delicate move. Mia will undo the knots and leave the stage. Over towards the left, big crowd. <laughs> Wave to the crowd. Her comp is done. Right, three athletes done. And Mattia Pozzi out next. And Mattia is going to be pretty nervous, I would imagine, back there. But whatever Mattia does, she's guaranteed a PB. So it's yeah. just a case that there's no pressure on her, yeah, is there? Yeah, she can enjoy. <laughs> I really hope she does. Yeah, Jakob went over to her after the semis to congratulate her. And she was just sort of shaking her head in disbelief, like couldn't believe that she yeah. managed it. She's done so much progress the last year, yeah. Yeah, she's still young, 22. Really coming on. Doesn't look so comfortable in this first part either. Yeah, it's one of those typical root setter beginners. Yeah, isn't really? it? <laughs> it's like, oh, here's a dual text thing to stand on to, to begin your competition. Welcome to the stage. No, she's ready. Oh, she's snatching at that a little bit and she's, oh. All right, you, you get the feeling the nerves are there right now. And I think if she manages to get to the coordination move, hits that run and jump, I think the nerves will settle down. Yeah, probably. And you can also breathe mm. <laughs> once again. Helps. All right, left foot kicking out to the, to the white volume, into the crimps.
hooks the right foot over. <laughs> Very dramatic song in the background as well. Goes in that 40 nerves. But she looks quite um, not so nervous. Yeah, I think she's settled down a bit now. Yeah. Definitely had a moment down low. And now I think it's just about climbing. The thing is, I mean, you're too pumped <laughs> to get nervous on routes like this. <laughs> All right, this is the run and jump. She looks over and takes a deep, deep breath. James Bond theme tune playing in the background. <laughs> How cool is this? First finals. All right, she takes a moment to get herself set up and ready. Oh, oh no. but she peels off it. The hand sliding down the dual tech. She's still got a big smile on her face, though. Well, gave it everything. Yeah, I think she didn't catch it so properly. It was something about a body movement. As she jumped, I kind of took half a breath. You know, I, 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 there was something yeah. not quite there with the jump. Still a huge achievement. Absolutely massive. Another young gun coming through. Oh, Matea is done quickly. Forcing that dot through. Well, darkness is beginning to descend as we come up to 9.30 here in Villa sur Olon. Let's watch a replay of the beginning. This is where she started to look nervous, got those clips in, and then seemed to calm down through this section a little bit find herself again and let's watch the run and jump see what happened because she was definitely fully on it started the swing with the kick left hand right hand it's just, she almost seemed to miss a foot underneath yeah really she tried to s catch some foot with the right foot but yeah the foot wasn't know. really there all right, Matthias done. 17 plus for her jesse pill still out in front 43 plus mia crample and jane kim make up our top three and up next will be Natsuki Tani from Japan. Four athletes to go. Before we say goodbye to the lead wall for another year. And look at that top three here. Yanni Garnbrett, Brooke Rabbit and Shenso. And all, sorry. <laughs> all these athletes got this very different style. And also in the route there are some different styles I'm really looking forward to see because it seems that everything works really interesting. Yeah, exactly. Well, styles make for shows. And uh, as you say, all three of them have got something a bit different to bring to the table. Uh, we just pause here, halfway through our comp. And just to remind you of the schedule for the rest of the weekend. It's the uh, final of the lead tonight. We've had the men, we're on to the women. And then tomorrow we have the speed competition on the wall. And the qualifiers will be broadcasted on the IFSC channel. But with no commentating, we just see the live action. And then the uh, finals, where well, you get to hear me again, I'm afraid. That will be tomorrow evening. And the crowd enjoying. A few beers going round. Good food. Have you been enjoying the atmosphere in the stadium? Yeah, really. I think there's still more than the men's final. Yeah, I think people have been coming in from miles around, it seems. They're just sort of attracted in like magnets yeah. to this place. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're being projected onto the big screen that you can see on the right of your screen. There's a climbing wall at the back for people to try stuff out. A covered bar area. It's got it all. VIP area that I'm specifically not allowed in. I, I'm the only one out of the entire media team without VIP, but I don't know what happened. <gasps> Very angry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now Suki Tani, I can see her in the middle of the stage, in the spotlight. She's waiting to come on. Suki Tani was in Innsbruck. Well, that's the only time we've seen her this year. She was in Morioka last year in 22. She's just 19 as well. Oh, yeah. 
we forget <laughs> so many young athletes. Yeah, especially in that Japanese squad. All right, she's got 45 seconds to look at the route. It was interesting. I had uh, the Canadian team coach in here during the semifinals, and he was saying he gets really nervous when the athletes use all of the 45 seconds. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> he just, he's just kind of like, okay, let's go now. Come on, it's time. <laughs> Although he's never seen anyone disqualified. No, I've never seen anyone kicked out for taking longer, but I think they hurry you along a bit. Are they hurrying you, or is it just taking then your time um, on climbing? No, I think they just tell you to get on with it, oh, okay. I think. But I, I've never seen it, so yeah, I don't me know. Neither. Let us know if you're watching. What happens if you use all of your 45 seconds, or more than? All right, Natsuki Tani is making sure of that right foot, because it's no tex. It's quite far for her. Not a short climber. Yeah, 152 centimeters. That's how tall she is. Pressing against the volume, you don't want a mistake down here. No. All right, first clip in. Bumps the hand over, tries to find what looks like a, yeah, she's got a heel in now on the left foot. <laughs> got the team behind her. <laughs> Yeah, Gumba is the uh, Japanese Ale, and Ale is Go, <laughs> basically. And it's <laughs> yeah. what climbers shout at each other to encourage them on. I like a Gamba. I love it. <laughs> when someone says Gamba Gamba if I'm climbing, I feel it just makes me feel cool. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> or strong. <laughs> or strong, exactly. I can channel the Japanese team. All right, she's got her left hand crimping, left foot up high. She's really in her comfort zone here. Yeah, she loves the heels. I think Jessie had like a side, like a toe in there more. Okay. So did Mia, but uh, oh, but big swing, and that's a long way for Natsuki Tani. She's gonna have to reset here. It looks like she tried to catch the heel hook. Ball. Yeah, I think she's went to the wrong one. Now she's got the right hold. Wow, well, that's far. It's far. She creeps her way into it. Matches and she'll flick her feet through. And here we go, the run and jump move is coming up. And we know it's not as straightforward as it might seem, this. Really hopes she does it. Three minutes 48 on the clock. Here she goes, back and forth, makes the jump, holds it, just holds it. Oh, wow. Had to readjust that right hand as she yeah, went. Really. I think she didn't even, or this foot, she didn't really use it. Mostly no. hold. Yeah, it was all about those hands, wasn't it? And the right foot hand was slipping down. Into the pinch, she suddenly sped up here. Yeah, really. Not sure if it's pump or time or what, but she's moving a lot quicker. I think she's the first to put the heel hook on the left for this move. That's yeah, and that could mean she is pumped. Changes her right into the crimp. Adjusts the left heel so the toes are pointing down so she can rotate through and make this move. High right heel. Wow. to struggle with that clip but gets it in okay now she'll be back on the crimps soon I think she will like this section if she wins this she'll become only the third Japanese woman to win a lead world cup oh, she's really? got a long way to go and a few athletes in the way <laughs> Uh, she climbs out of the darkness now into the light. Every move looks like she might go, but she's still there.
that heel is so marginal. A sense of deciding not to clip it off that heel it would have been tricky. Yeah. But she still needs to get it in at some point. Now she reaches down, but it can be a bit awkward that when it's underneath yeah, really. you. Let's go. Right, changes the hands around and looks up. This is the rotation move coming up. Has to pull the rope way high above her head, though. Just one minute left. This isn't too much. Still enough. It's still enough. So Jesse did this really differently from everyone else. Well, the correct, the, not the correct, the intended way of doing it. Well, the crimps are in. Now she's got to figure this out. She's running out of time, 40 seconds. She's got her foot on the door. Yeah, she's on the blue, which is the worst bit of it. And she's having to rush here. She knows time is ticking down. She's just going to have to commit to a sequence. Stress here on the head wall. I, I think she doesn't even realize she's got the wrong foot off. Or no, and uh, she slips down, Whoa. bumps and falls. And down she comes with a confused look on her face. It makes you realize, now we think back, the fact that Jessie's foot slipped down and then caught that black hole beneath it was really important because I don't think she yeah, was really. doing it the best way, but yeah. uh, it worked for her. And I think you can't see where you're, st you're standing, so I don't know how much they sh they've seen an observation because it's still quite right. Yeah, Mia Krampel, the one to read it right at the moment. Can't wait to see the next three. <laughs> now, this was the beginning of her roots. But comfortable on the crimps. Nearly dropped that jump, had to adjust the right hand. And then this is where time ran out. Watch the feet. That's what slipped and just, oh, just overbalancing over backwards. Just almost caught, caught herself with the foot on the right. Yeah, nearly. That's she impressive. was impressive. Close to the save. All right, well, she is done. And wait. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, she has a dance that she did. And I keep bringing this up, I've got to stop it. When she, she got the medal for Boulder, she did that kind of a dance. And it was awesome to see, because uh, she sometimes stays very within herself. But when mm. she opens up, it's like you realize what a cool personality she is. Looks like she's really looking forward to climb here. Yeah, it does, you're right. I think she's just having a good time. It's like an athlete, when an athlete's feeling good, on form, everything's coming together, it's, it's good feeling. Yeah. All right, takes a deep breath and off she goes. Three athletes to go in tonight's finals. Jesse Peltz leading the way with 43 plus. Mia Crample 40 plus and Natsuki Tani 36. So quite a difference between bronze and silver. But we'd expect her to get to that turning move. Yeah, and she really does, does mistakes. So she's also got 100% progression to finals. It's so impressive. Yeah, very, very consistent. She was fifth in Innsbruck. Also moves quite fast here. Yeah, super smooth. Just seems to know what to do instinctively. She's thinking about this. That's a bit different. Crosses through with the right. Doesn't use that toe around the corner. No. Looked good too. Yeah, certainly worked. All right, well, this is where the boulder training starts to come in. This move starts the swing. Huge swing, but held it. Jane looking on. Near Crample shouting up encouragement.
into the pinches. It is droppable though, this section. You've got to be careful, especially this right slope is not very good. Yeah, really. Also, oh no, not too much. It's the clip here, and you can feel the audience almost holding their breath as she comes up through here. <laughs> All eyes on her. Reaches through, gets the crit. Change, hand change. Makes the match. You can see her eyes flicking over to the handhold there on the right. Still looks quite easy. Also this heel. She makes the clip of the heel, made it look a bit more comfortable this time. Out towards the slopers, bumping the right hand through. And the crowd know what's coming. Yeah. All right, here we go. The chess games begins, but she's got two minutes and 43 to figure it out. She can take her time here. She's already got the right foot out. Yeah, she's on it. She'd want to get this clip in here, though. Now gets that. Now she can focus on this sequence. Apparently, if you if you do the rotation, it's not a hard move. Like, it's really not very difficult. But just trying to yeah. figure it out, it feels so weird. I don't know if they saw it from the bottom and looked through it like this. Or no, I don't think. I think I'd read it like this, that you yeah. kind of do a foot match. It's not that obvious. Yeah, and it, it does work like that. So that's I like yeah. setting like that when there is a, a really cool way, but there's another option. You yeah. Know? Jane looks down at the ground, checks the clock, she's got plenty of time. Big move up, holds it, kicking the left foot out to balance herself for a second. Now she can... Well, does it's a big... dynamically, <laughs> oh, wow. I tell you what, it's not that good, that hold. That was a risky move. No, really. All right, final sequence. Still has a lot of time. She does, and she's coming close to Jesse's score here and might be surpassing it. Jessie was pressing up to this final hold when she fell. The run out begins. Quite different method than Jessie. Yeah, she's really having to pistol squat up on that right leg. Right hand wrapped around the sloper. Looks so uncomfortable. It really is super awkward. You're going to a bad dish above your head as well. Oh, wow. I don't know how she's matching that thing. <laughs> I really don't. What is she holding on to? Just Head against the wall. Up. Yeah, she's in a screw hold, I think. Just anything. But look, you can see the palm print on the black volume. That's where you, you kind of can fall into on the left. The set has put that in deliberately. But I guess you first stand up and then... And then fall, press, yeah. yeah. 30 seconds to go. It's going to be close, whatever she does. Just trying to unwrap herself. Stand up tall. 20 seconds. Wants to bring that left foot over. Oh, she's going to go. She oh does no. go. Falling in a cloud of chalk. Doesn't get the plus. Doesn't get the plus. Well, we'll wait and see, because that plus will make a huge difference. Yeah, really. But she didn't really go up towards it, because no. she was falling backwards. So that might be massive for, uh, for Jessie. We'll wait to see if it gets changed, but I'm not sure she will get awarded that. Still, she moved up from this hold, so... Yeah, I think she's staying on 43, so that will mean silver medal. The rain has returned, of course. You can see it in the background. And this is what happened, crossing through. The run and the jump and the kick. Quick work from her, and then that was the thumb. She did it the norm normal way, but this fight here... Just didn't give up, so impressive. 
<laughs> a slow motion fall looks scary for a sec as you try to find an orientation in the air. All right, so our top three. Jesse Piltz guaranteed a medal. Shenzhou and Silver currently, Mia Krampel, Bronze, Brooke Rabatou and Yanya Garnbrett to come. So this will be second medal for Jesse. Yes, yeah, true. Second medal in a row for Jesse. Removes the shoes, puts the slippers on. <laughs> Looking tired there. Such a full body movement, that press. Yeah. All right, well, she exits, Brooke Rabatou enters. Here we go. Confidently walking out. Remembering the sequences, keeping warm. It is chilly out there. Yeah, these alpine summer nights can go either way. And in Vilas with a mist, it tends to be quite cold in the evenings. Neck craned backwards, trying to see through the overhang. Right, plastic covering off, and we are about to get underway. Checking with the Vila, smile on her face. If you're supporting Team USA, here's your moment. Left foot up, Ooh, little, little moment yeah. there. Yeah, so Brooke settles herself down, gets this clip in. Looks very confident. Yeah, she has that swingy style, she just lets her feet go sometimes. She does the double clip. Our left, dragging with that right fingers. She loves a drag. Kicks the feet over to the left, comes underneath, quick flick out with the left hand, and a big bump up. But Rabatou crosses through. I think I'm getting more tense as the music gets tense. I'm so yeah. affected by the music, always. She gets the toes. I think she doesn't. <laughs> no. Can you hear music when you're, when you're up there on the wall? Sometimes. Um, sometimes I hear the cheering and the music, and sometimes not at all. So it really depends. It depends on the level of flow state, doesn't it? Well, I think it's always a bit not really conscious, but always a bit. <laughs> In the background. All right, Brooke pulls the rope, gives herself a bit of slack. And now here we go for the run and jump. Absolutely nails it. So first time for Brooke Rabatou. Tried to heal there. Decided to make the clip from down low instead. Gets that in and then I think she'll flick into the heel to rest. <laughs> Crowd going crazy. Down below. Right, there's the heel that she thought about getting in with the clip, but much better from that position. She also won the shorter climber. Maybe she might do the, yeah, the heel hook. Yeah, perhaps. Oh, no. One, Good five, bench. eight, but she bumps up into it. It's fascinating the differences in times here yeah, with really. the women. We've had everything. Really slow to really fast. And the mist is now back to its traditional blowing across the arena as it starts to come down. And we know that can create a little bit of humidity in the air. Let's hope it doesn't cause a slip for Brooke. High, high feet. First, does it like this? It looks good too. So, oh, she's snatching it out a bit. Uh, full concentration from Brooke Rabbitty. Gets the right foot up above the coping of that volume. That's the clip in. 
All right, she's into the slopers. Two and a half minutes as well. Lots of time to get this. So, Brooke Rabatou up on the slopers. Needs to start this moves out towards the right where the feet are blocked. Things all get a bit weird up there on the lead route. Now, this is it. She's standing on top of the volume. She can't stay there for long, though. Just needs to make this clip and then drop down and find those feet. Oh, willing the hole to get bigger there. All right, here we go. She commits to the first foot. She's into the black one underneath, drills it in. Right. Thumb up. But then, as most people do, they get here and it suddenly doesn't really work. Mia Crample, the only one figuring out the spin. She might do it as well. She's looking up towards the, uh, the jug, the way above her head. Checks the time. It runs so fast the time. She was so fast until here and then for less yeah. than a minute. It's just a completely stop a move if you can't figure it out. Left foot drops the right down. She's doing it the method that is the obvious method. Two thumbs underneath the thumb, <laughs> thumb to cling, as it's been dubbed. And she's through now if she can just bring that left foot to match. She's doing it quite dynamic. She pulls down on the rope just to make a bit of slack. It was a bit tight on her. She wanted oh, enough wow. to be able to do that move. Looks so smooth. It is, but she's got 16 seconds. She's going to get timed out oh, unless yeah. she manages to really motor through. You can see how quickly she's trying to do it. Mia Crample in third, remember, on 40 plus. Brooke Rabatou coming close. That's 39. Oh, Three seconds to get into a medal position. 40. She's now oh, into no. third position. Presses upwards. Time is out. She's done. I doubt she can hear, though, that That's it's finished. Sweet. She'll stand up. And the thing is, you wouldn't want to jump off at this point. Even if a judge is telling you to come down, I would be definitely not taking this swing. <laughs> I don't even know if she realizes. I think she does, but yeah, I, probably. I think she's going to set for it. Huge fall from Brooke Rabatou. Came oh, down. That's a nice performance. Yeah, that was a real battle at the end. And she kind of came quite hard into the wall there. I hope she's OK. Just getting timed out through that sequence, yeah. Still, it's really a lot of moves in, I don't know, 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, she found something at the top. Exploding through that top sequence. Yeah, this was when she made the jump around the corner. No one's actually got that far. Didn't get it though, took the big fall, came into the wall. All right, well, Brooke Rabatou is done. <laughs> I would imagine that knot is uh, so, so tight after a fall like that. Yeah. Locking up. So I don't know which is the last hold she got. Yeah, we'll wait to see the confirmation of that score, but she's on a podium. I love the way they walk past the athlete who's about to come on. It's just yeah. super dramatic. Jesse still sitting on that nice chair. <laughs> yeah, good point. Jesse's still on the top spot. All right, here we go. Final athlete of the evening. We've had the men's competition. Jakob Schubert taking the gold there. Janja Gaumbrett is the final athlete who can make an impact on the podium. She won double gold in Innsbruck. Someone at the front of the stage is going insane <laughs> in the darkness. Here goes Janja. All right, well, that smile is on her face. She loves to fight hard. I think she'll find the bottom pretty straightforward. Yeah. 
I think too. And she also moves quite fast, so I think time won't be an issue. Yeah, no top so far from the women. Brooke coming close, but she was timed out quite a long time before she got to that. All right, yeah, and yeah, all eyes on you. I mentioned it in the semis. Do go and watch the interview from Innsbruck with Yanya. It was really frank, really honest about her comeback from injury, the emotions, the feelings she went through. And it makes you appreciate her even more. Crosses through. Crowd already is already getting crazy <laughs> just by seeing her. Oh, doesn't do the talk either. All right, Yanya is underway. We haven't got a clock on screen right now. We are working on it. I'll let you know if it gets close. All right, Yanya gets set for the jump. All right, she's easily through the first sequence, leans back, shakes out. And you're looking confident at the moment. Liv looking nervous next to me here as Yanya <laughs> climbs upwards. It's different in the commentary box, isn't it? It's, it's like very intense up here. Yeah, I think I'm always nervous <laughs> watching, but yeah. Yanya's right, well on the sloper, climbing super quick. Up with the left hand. High heel, confident stuff from Yanni, as you'd expect through here. And the rain has returned and is falling heavily on the stadium. Yanni flicks her feet over, nearly gets tangled in the rope, avoids it. Crosses through. She'll need to rest, but she'll need to keep moving here because we know how hard to figure out this top moves up. She was still shaking in the steepest part of the wall. All right, well, she looks fresh at the moment. Yeah, really. And he didn't expect her to be too challenged by this part of the route, but the next moves, anything can happen. She goes for the heel, which is thin. That's the right hand up. Two minutes 55 on the clock. She's got lots of time to sort this out. Drops really low here. Yeah. So I hope she will do the spin. <laughs> yeah, well, she read, she might have read it with Mia Crample. Mia's the only one to have done that. But yeah, I, so I don't know if Mia saw it before, if she just yeah, did really. it in the moment. I guess we'll find out in a sec. If Yanya does it straight away, we'll know they saw it. But she needs to stand up and make a high clip here. Everyone else has stood on that dual text for a second to do it. She'll rest, chalk up, make sure of it. She knows this is the sequence. Now she gets the clip. She's standing on that right foot. There's not a lot there. Good trust from the yeah, feet. Really. I think Jessie did the same. All right, she's on the bottom one. She gets the thumbs in, and I think she's going to try it. Oh, maybe. Oh, has she read oh, it? I nice. think she has. She has. Turns to face the crowd. Thumbs in, and then, <laughs> yeah, that is what the set is intended. And I would imagine she'll love that moment standing up there. Everyone does. <laughs> Yeah, high above the crowd, facing outwards with everyone's eyes focused on you. What a moment for Yanya. Twists through. Brilliant from her. She's still got time. She's still got time. Lots of time. Minute 12. So will she jump? <laughs> no. no, right hand up. Holds the barn door. 
gets the right foot high above her head, and now she needs to do this press, though. Yeah, looks looks really easy with Brook. Did look easy with Brook, but Yanni is 164 centimeters. He's got more legs to push through. Yeah, it really. can be hard. It's so out of balance. She's got 43. She needs a plus for the victory. That might do it. Wow. Hopefully she does the top. And it does do it. Yanya moves into the gold medal position. Palms out as intended. She's one move away here. Matches. The crowd go crazy. 22 seconds. She's going to jump. I think. Oh, she slips. doesn't see it. Right. Now she's got wow. it. And Yanya Garbrett will top out. That's all of the routes. Sorted for so Yanya. Nice. Gold medal again. Oh, wow. Well, I think she's won every time here. What else can you say for Yanya Garbrett? She comes down. A winner here in Vila once more. Into the rain and the crowd on their feet, applauding. Grabs the Vila's hand, is pulled back to the mats. And no one has left the stadium despite the rain. And Yanya Garbrett will take victory. So impressive. Well, Lib, thank you so much for joining me here today. You've yeah, got to now go and interview Yanya Garnbrett. So start thinking of some questions. Uh, and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Thank you very much for joining me. <laughs> thank you me. too. All right, Yanya receives the hugs from the other athletes out on the stage. Mia Krampel, her teammate, talking through. They both did the rotation. They both read that correctly. Yanya Garbrett, a winner once more. All right, so just to let you know the order of things here, you have interviews coming up. Then the podium for the men and women. And then finally, we'll say goodbye. But do remember to return for the speed tomorrow. Yanya Garbrett is introduced. She runs onto the stage. Big hug from Jesse Piltz. Gold medal for Yanya. And those three, another very famous podium. <laughs> Yanya all smiles as she takes another victory. Walks off towards the edge of the stage. Olive will be meeting her in a minute for those interviews. And the crowd, the umbrellas go up in the background. The lights dim. And it's pretty dark here in the stadium, actually. Only really the, uh, the wall is lit. Let's see a replay of Yanya, shall we? Started off confidently, cruised through the bottom of the route, as we'd expect from her. And then this was the move, and I think she enjoyed that. Top swinging around, makes the clip. And by that point, Yanya Garnbrett took victory once more. Weekend's work done for Yanya. Oh, we're getting set up for our interviews down at the front. Sponsors logos showing up on the wall there, EP climbing walls. And yeah, a new wall in Chamonix coming up. Looking forward to seeing that. Although I live there, I haven't actually had a look at it yet. I haven't really been in the town recently. Chamonix next week. We'll get extra content underway on Thursday. Friday qualies. But all that's in the future right now. We're waiting for Yanya. Let's just get confirmation. Yanya Garnbrett at top. She takes the gold medal. Jessica Piltz, 43 plus. Brooke Rabbit, who's so, so close, 43. Shenso, also 43, but knocked down due to count back. Mia Krampel, Natsuki Tani, Jane Kim, and Mattia Pozzi in her first final, 17 plus. Early fall from her, but a PB. And she'll be pleased with that result.
good separation towards the top, but the crux of the women's route was certainly that rotation. That was a really spectacular move there. Very much planned by the setters. They wanted to create a move like that, and two of the athletes did it. And what was good to see is there was other ways through it because All right, we're almost ready for our interview. I can see Yanya on stage. Podium has been set up, so uh, hopefully things will be nice and smooth. Let's go down to Yanya and hear what she has to say, shall we? So congratulations, Yanya. Um, yeah, first, how does it feel to win here again after winning already in Innsbruck? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, it feels incredible. I've always loved Villar. I always love coming here, so Villar is kind of my competition. I feel like at home here. So um, after Innsbruck, of course, I felt confident. I saw that my lead shape is there. So uh, I went to compete in Villar with full confidence, and this is how I climbed in the finals, even though the finals route was really easy, actually. Uh, but I just enjoyed so much with the crowd, even though it's raining today. Uh, I enjoyed so much, so yeah. So tell me about the spin. Did you plan to do it um, when looking at your route or was this quite spontaneous? Uh, you mean the top? I didn't hear you. <laughs> um, the spin move. Ah, the spin, sorry. Um, yeah, um, I had two options. So plan, plan A and plan B. Uh, so plan A was not to turn. Uh, but then when I was there, I said, why not try? Uh, because I saw it coming also in lead. We've seen it in bouldering. So also now in lead and it, uh, it turned out great. <laughs> and what did past uh, through your head when you looked at the crowd um, after spinning? <laughs> It was amazing, incredible feeling. Although I was super stretched and felt a little bit weird, but uh, looking down at the crowd and all cheering, it was amazing. Oh, nice to hear. Congratulations again and enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there we go. Good to hear about plan A and plan B. Always interesting to hear what the athletes are going through in their heads when they do that. All right, so Yanya will go backstage and get herself set up for the podiums. Organizers getting things done nice and quick and all set up, ready to go. Yeah, so the award ceremony will follow. Tomorrow, speed. <laughs> Fastest athletes in the world. Will world records go down? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, full attention flicks from the lead wall to that speed wall. A lot of the athletes now either heading down to Lausanne in Switzerland to go training. A couple, as Victor said earlier on, going over to Chamonix a few days early. And if you haven't watched the uh, competition in Chamonix, it's pretty spectacular. The lead wall is framed by some of the biggest mountains in Europe. And when the sun sets, let me tell you, as long as it isn't stormy and cloudy, it's incredible. So we have that to look forward to in a week's time. Let's just remind ourselves again, Yanya Garnbre winning with a top, only one to do so. She said she found the route easy. I think it was, a, I was about to say finickety, which isn't really a word, but I'm sure you know what I mean, fiddly. Jessica Piltz, silver for her, Brick Rabbit 2 bronze, Shan So. Mia Krampel, Natsuki Tani, Jane Kim, and Mattia Pozzi make up our top eight. And for the men, Jakob Schuber, 42 plus, no tops for the men. But gold for him, second medal in a row. Adam Ondra gets a silver in his return to lead comp climbing. Alex Magos in third, Toby Roberts fourth, Colin Duffy fifth, Serato and Raku. Yufai Pan and Shion Omata in eighth. Now, I have just been told via the voice of my ears that there is an appeal against Brooke Rabatou. So, there might be a little delay while they work that out, and certainly it will make an impact. So, we'll wait and see. 
That's the only information I have right now. Not sure what the appeal was. Presumably it was for a plus or not. We'll see. <laughs> Someone is screaming that song very out of tune there in the background. <laughs> Not sure they know they're on uh, live TV. Hey, X Factor, you know. Next contestant right there. Well, I'll let you know if I get any more information on that appeal and whether it affects things. Can keep an eye on the scoring on the IFSC app. You can download it. Certainly, according to that, Brooke is still in third, still in bronze. It's probably caused a bit of a delay. The podium is lit up by the spotlight, and we are waiting for the athletes to come. See the action video on the right-hand side. Via Ferrata and biking, I presume, and paragliding as well. Switzerland, land of adventure sports, eh? Let's see how Yanya did it once more. It was an impressive run from her. She got the top. This was the move. <laughs> she seemed to enjoy it out there in the spotlight. Rotated through. Once she'd done that flick, really, it was all over. Made the jump onto the, the hole that's awkward, shaped the wrong way, but she got the top in, got the quick draw. Job done for Yanni Garnbre. See the fried egg hold, as I called it. The white stack volumes with the yellow jug in the middle of it. I'm pretty sure this pause is because of the appeals. Or the appeal. I think everyone's ready. A lot of people have now finally left uh, away from the rain. Speed climbers certainly will be tucked up in bed, ready for tomorrow. Well, we'll wait for this appeal to go through. That's the delay. So stick with us for the award ceremony. I'll keep you updated. Keep us on in the background while we wait for confirmation of that, and we'll return as soon as possible for the medals. Well, 
We're going to watch some of the men's highlights now from the final, so sit back and enjoy some of the action from earlier on this evening. Well, that was a story from earlier on. The men competing. Well, it was still daylight. The women competing after that as night fell. And just to keep you updated, this pause in proceedings is because of an appeal against Brooke Rabatou, who's currently sitting in the bronze medal position. So obviously an important one to get right. It'll be around a plus or a not a plus decision, as it always seems to be. And obviously the judges, coaches and everyone needs to be happy and the decision needs to be correct before we can proceed. So that's why we're waiting. So bear with us. Thank you for being patient. And I'll let you know as soon as I get any information. So if you're just joining us, we're in Villa Ciolo and we are waiting for the podium to get underway. Men and women have finished climbing. Jakob Schubert taking a victory for the men. Janja Garnbrett the gold for the women. And the reason that there's this slight delay is there's an appeal against Brooke Rabatou and they're just sorting it out before they can give the medals because currently she has a bronze. That's the situation going on behind the scenes someone is uh, working against the clock back there rather than the me and in fact I just got a message through 
confirming the women's results. So I'm literally opening this message as we speak. And on that, that has Brooke Rabatou with the bronze medal. So that seems to suggest the appeal is over. That's the official result. So that appeal seems to be not counted against Brooke Rabatou. So that means that she will take the bronze medal. And that also means that we're pretty close to our podium. So thank you for your patience. I think things have been resolved. And there we go, some confirmation. Yanni Garnbrett with the top. Jessie Piltz, 43 plus, she'll take the silver medal. And Brooke Rabatou with a 43 will take bronze. Shan So after that, Mia Krampel, Natsuki Tani, Jane Kim and Mattia Pozzi. Award ceremony to follow. Well, here we go, the music kicks in. Dignitaries are ready. Marcus Scolaris, the IFSC president, will enter the stage. And we're almost ready here. And there are the men podium finishes. Alex Makos, Jakob Schubert and Adam Ondra. I mean, come on. <laughs> what a list of names, eh? Some of the best climbers that have ever lived are standing on that stage right now. There is Marcus Glaris on the left-hand side. Adam looking over at Jakob there. And Alex. Legends. Alex gets the medal around his neck. He's making good progression towards that World Championships in a couple of weeks. A smile on his face. Adam Ondra will receive a silver. Silver in Prague as well for Boulder. Been pretty successful on the comps he's chosen. And big support from Alex as he thanks the crowd. Adam Ondra gets silver, stands up tall. He's also making good progression. The Olympics foremost in his mind. <laughs> we should, if we mention Jane Kim being a mum, Adam, of course, is a dad. Oh, now I just want to know what's in the box. What's in the box? Adam, show us. I mean, we're in Switzerland. Maybe it's a Rolex. I doubt it, but maybe. And finally, Jakob Schubert, gold medal deserving winner here tonight, fought his way through that route. He stands on the top spot. And as you can hear from the crowd, a popular winner here in Vila. So time for the national anthem of Austria. <laughs> They've got too many things they're holding on to. Oh, look, Alex has opened the box. What is that? Oh, it's a trophy. There we go. 
So three trophies awarded, three medals. Athletes standing tall and proud, and now we will listen to the national anthem of Austria for deserving Jakob Schubert. Good work from all three. Congratulations to all the men who climbed over the last couple of days. Tricky routes, big falls, lots of action. And Jakob is done. We'll move on to Chamonix Briançon next. It's time for the women to get their medals. The men will stand up. <laughs> Alex balancing his way up. Hey, careful, Alex, careful, Alex. All right, the men will exit the stage. We'll reset for the ladies. Uh, here we go, the women are entering the stage. Brooke Rabatou leads the way. Bronze medal for her. Yanya gets the gold. Jesse Pilt silver. That is our top three here tonight in Vila. Rabatou takes the bronze medal. And the uh, box full of goodies and trophies and all the rest.
Jessie Pills, another medal, two in a row for her. Silver this time. Clearly in lead climbing form as Jessie gets the medal hung around her neck. And finally, Yanya Gambra, another gold medal to her vast collection of gold medals. Deserving victor tonight, she cruised through the route, topped it, the only one to do so, and she wins here tonight in Switzerland. Well, you've heard it more than once if you watch IFSC comp climbing. It's time for the Slovenian national anthem. Well, congratulations to the women as well. Interesting route they had to contend with, some tricky bits and a very, very unique move at the top. But those three take victory, or take victory, take the medals here tonight. And the party will continue here in Vila. And it'll continue tomorrow as well, speed climbing. Qualifications that will be broadcasted on the YouTube channel of the IFSC and then the finals with commentary tomorrow evening. Thank you so much to all my co-commentators who joined me tonight, the athletes, the organizers, the TV crew, and everyone who's been working behind the scenes. It's been an amazing comp. We will return in Chamonix for more lead climbing action. My name is Matt Groom, and thank you so much for watching.